Grace. Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday the 19th of October. My name is Rachel Parker. Uh, my pronouns are she, she, her, and hers. I am an Anglican priest serving in the Anglican Church of Canada in the Diocese of Edmonton in the province of Alberta and I serve as the rector for Day Spring Ministries which is the ministries coming out of emerging from uh, St. Mary's Anglican Church in Edgerton St. Saviors in Vermilion and St. Thomas in Wainwright. I'm glad to be with you today. I'm glad you could be with me. So some of you might know that over the last um, little while I have been doing some work with some really great lay people and a really supportive bishop to um, create what we're referring to now as Dayspring Ministries, which is the, the grouping of three churches, three Anglican churches. They're smaller um, Two small, like small, Wainwright and Edger and Vermilion are like would be small towns, and then Vermilion or Edgerton, which is a village. And we have been working together to to bring together our ministries so that we can both worship on Sundays and do all the normal church stuff um, that you think of when you think church on Sunday, but that we might also find ways in these smaller outlets, these smaller communities, to figure out how to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to be Christians together in our community. So by sharing resources, but also like financial resources, but also by sharing people resources and figuring out just, you know, intentionally starting from scratch and thinking, how do we serve God where we are as the people we are doing for God, the gifts that with the, with the doing things for God, with the gifts that God has given us. So we've been doing this thing. We started officially at the Canadian Thanksgiving a week and a half ago. And we are plowing forward into you know, a universe unknown. <laughs> but um, in addition to that, we have another layer of that now because I have been appointed and will be collated at a big synod service on Friday evening uh, at the cathedral at, um, uh, in Edmonton. Um, we gather, a synod is a body of people, a gathering of a body of people. And so in the Anglican Church, we gather for our synod. Um, usually yearly or once every two years, um, sometimes every three years, depending on the size of your diocese. And we we talk about the business of the church. You know, how do we run the church, the finances, the discipline, the, the things like that. We figure out what the vision is, what our bishop is asking us to do, and how, what direction we're going to take. And we have conversations, and we pray together, and we break bread together, both sacramentally in the Eucharist and communion, but also when we sit down and have meals together. And um, we were doing that this weekend, Friday and Saturday in Edmonton. And at the synod service, at the communion service, when we all gather together as representatives of all of our churches from across the diocese, we do special things. And one of those things that the bishop is going to be doing is going to collate me um, as an archdeacon. And um, so my title, thenceforward, as long as I am an archdeacon, will be, instead of being the Reverend Rachel Parker, I will be the Venerable Rachel Parker. <laughs> and so um, my sister has asked me, okay, so what the heck does Venerable mean? And so I looked it up here. It says, Venerable is means accorded a great deal of respect, especially because of age, wisdom, or character. So the joke here in my house is it, it must be for age. It's my wisdom and character might be kind of questionable. Um, uh, the thing is, in my diocese, I am considered, would be considered a senior priest. I've been ordained for 23 years, and um, I'm, I've got more time in than most of the clergy. There's a few who have been around longer than me, but not many. Um, so, yeah, maybe the age, <laughs> age thing is the reason. Um, but as an archdeacon... I will be an assistant to the bishop. And in this particular diocese, our, our bishop has what he was refers to as an episcopal service, so a, a circle. The episcopacy is the bishop and the way that, that we work. We have in the Anglican Church, we have a bishop who oversees all of the priests and deacons and lay people. Um, and that's how we work out the, not, I don't want to say hierarchy, although that's what it is, but it's sort of how we work out the, the who has what roles within the diocese. Um, and in this case, our diocese has this Episcopal circle in which the archdeacons act as assistants to the bishop. We come together, we advise the bishop, we um, think about those things that the diocese needs and how we can help the diocese move forward. 
to discern and understand and, and pull together all these things. And in this diocese, our bishop is doing something a little different. A lot of places have more what they call territorial archdeacons, so an archdeacon who oversees an area, kind of like an area vice president or something who, you know, handles the day-to-day -day help, help out the smaller outlets, the venues, and the smaller churches then would look to the archdeacon, the territorial archdeacon, for assistance and for answers to questions and those things. So the bishop's not inundated by those things. Well, in this diocese, they do things a little bit differently in that the archdeacons are not specifically um, territorial, but they have a purpose. So we have a children's family and ministry, uh, a children and family ministries archdeacon. And we have an archdeacon who is very much in, involved in, in, in training lay people and helping people to discern um, their call and, and how do they, how do we educate people in the church? We have someone who is an archdeacon and really focuses on social justice and outreach and and, and things like that. We also have an Archdeacon for Indigenous Ministries, and I know I'm forgetting something, um, but I haven't been yet to the Episcopal Circle, so I will learn. My, my learning curve is pretty much vertical. Um, but I will be the Archdeacon for Rural Ministry. And in our diocese, our, where the church, the cathedral sits, where the, the bishop's office is, is in the heart of Edmonton, which is the big city in our diocese. It's the biggest biggest place, um, um, metropolis in our, in our, in our diocese. But a, a considerable number of Anglican churches reside within the city or the sub suburbs or the outlying neighboring communities of Edmonton. But there's a considerable group also of Anglican churches in our diocese that, that are on the outskirts, that are in the farm country or up in the mountains in Jasper, um, other places that don't fit into the city mold and have their own unique way of being, whether that is, um, for, you know, the small towns like Wainwright Vermilion and, and the villages like, like Edgerton, or whether it's places that are very involved in the oil industry or logging, but also especially a lot of places where it's farming. And all of those places that sort of fall outside the city limits, they bring with them each a unique way of looking at the world, a unique way of seeing things. For instance, um, this past year, uh, a year ago, um, we did we had a drought. And if you're in the city, you might have heard things like, you know, a water ban. You can't walk, you know, you, you're not supposed to water your lawn with your sprinkler and things like that. And the water, the water ban, the, the, the implications of climate change and that in the city were significant, but had a limited impact in some ways. However, in the rural areas of the diocese, this was catastrophic for some people. For farmers who need to water their animals, for we, we need water for crops, all of these things. The, the way the weather is, the way the climate is, is a significant, a significant impact on our rural, on our rural population. Um, this, this fact that we have communities that are getting smaller and smaller, and you know, I'm sure you see it in your areas as well, when the post office and the public school and the hospital and all these things start to close down and, and those resources or those, those, res, those, um, those groupings of things that people thought of as the heart of a community are closed and go off to bigger centers and you have to now drive further to get your milk or to go see a doctor or something, that has an impact on the community from which those places were, were taken away. And the churches are facing the same thing. Many places, the churches are holding on for dear life and, and holding on as vestiges of hope in those communities. But in some places, um, the churches also are, are closing. But just because a church closes doesn't mean there aren't still Christians hanging about and <laughs> saying, well, wait a minute, what about me? I used to go there to worship. I was baptized there. My grandparents were baptized there. Where am I going to go to church now? And that's a big question for those of us who live outside of the city, because we don't have an easy access to another church. My church is one of the one in, I live in Wainwright. My church is about two minutes away by car from here, the Wainwright church. The Edgerton church is about 20 minutes away from here. And the Vermilion church is about, at about 40 minutes away from here. Um, and so anybody who lives where anywhere near where I live has a considerable amount of time they have to drive just to get to church. So those 
aspects of what it is to be church and what it is to be a Christian and how do we serve our community, how do we serve God, take on completely different meanings and different um, different ways of looking and being when you are separate from the city. Um, and that's not a bad thing. It's a thing. And so the bishop has asked me to, to take on the work of, of assisting those parishes um, and, and those people, the lay people and the priests, in figuring out how do we do church? How do we do Christian ministry inside and outside of the church in the rural context within this diocese? And that's really exciting. The other thing about the archdeacon thing that I like, and I have no idea really what my job description will be yet, I have some inklings and I have some hopes, but we'll see. But one of the things that I find very humbling um, and that I hope I never I never lose sight of is, is my title, Archdeacon. You see, the world I come from, a deacon is a servant. When you are first ordained, um, before you're ordained a priest, you can be or you are ordained a deacon and you can be a transitional deacon, meaning eventually you'll be ordained a priest and move on to sacramental or priestly ministry. Or you can be a vocational deacon, meaning you'll stay ordained a deacon only for the rest of your life. And then only is in very, very tiny little letters because the deacon is that person who serves the church in the world. So if I was a vocational deacon, if my role was to be a deacon, I would come into church on Sunday, I would read the gospel, I would prepare the altar for communion, and I would pronounce the dismissal, the sending out of the people into the world. Because my role, my job as a deacon in the church would be to go out into the world to serve the people, to serve the homeless, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to do all those things that a servant of Jesus Christ does. And as a priest, I was ordained a deacon first, and hence when I was ordained a priest, the deacon part doesn't disappear. It's There are other responsibilities added on to me being a deacon. But the way I would like to look at being an archdeacon isn't so much the venerable part. I'm having trouble thinking of myself with that title. I really am. It's it's it's. I know I need to own it, but it's sitting funny yet in my mouth when I say it. But the archdeacon part makes me think that really my role is to be the deacon who helps the deacons. The servant who helps the servant, who serves the servants, who go out into the world, into the rural world, into the rural roots, um, onto the rural roots and into the rural roots of people to serve them, to help them understand who Jesus is in their life, who they're called to be, how they're called to serve, how they're called to worship. And so I hope that, and I pray that my ministry as an archdeacon will be grounded in that sense of the deacon part, that I am, I am the deacon over the deacons. I'm the archdeacon, but in that arch, in that being set above in a way, that setting above is very much to lead by example and to be the deacon for the deacons. That I, and, and in my mind, the deacons are not necessarily the ordained deacons, but they are the servants of the church. Each and every one of those parishioners in each and every one of these Anglican churches in the Diocese of Edmonton that is rural, R-U-R-A-L, that we are away from the city and that we have been given this incredibly beautiful gift of being stewards of this earth that provides the bread, that provides the grains and that, that make our bread, the corn that feeds our cattle, that the sense of getting back to the creation that God has, has entrusted to our care. And so as I begin or prepare to begin this new ministry, I hope that it will inform and it will influence church at home and that we together can figure out what it is to be rural because a lot of you who watch with me are not from big cities. You're very much from those places that, that understand the difference from being in the big city and being out there in the world where things are just a little bit different and they're just, they're beautiful in a different way. And we're called to do things in a different way. And so I thank you for being with me to celebrate this new experience, this new opportunity. And 
I imagine when I am, I come back on Monday uh, or Tuesday when I do church at home and I've been an archdeacon officially for a little while, a couple of days, maybe I'll have some more thoughts on that. But as it's now announced to my congregation in my diocese, and I'm working with that whole, the venerable Rachel Parker thing, which won't happen till Friday. I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm excited to be a deacon with the deacons. I'm excited to be a servant with those who serve God in those rural places. I look forward to taking those rural roots, R-O-U-T-E-S, as I seek out and celebrate the rural roots, R-O-O-T-S with the rural people here in this diocese. Thank you for letting me share this news with you, and thank you for your support and your prayers. If you have any wisdom for me, if you have any suggestions, please share them. Have a great day, and God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.